Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this new day. Thank you for all your blessings and protection during this pandemic. Please help us to understand our story for today. Help us to keep our eyes on you and be enveloped by your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please open your Bibles with me in the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 19 to 21. I repeat, Romans chapter 12 verses 19 to 21. My friends, do not try to punish others when they wrong you. Wait for God to punish them with his anger. It is written, I am the one who punishes. I will Pay people back, says the Lord. But you should do this. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him a drink. Doing this will be like pouring burning coals on his head. Do not let evil defeat you. Defeat evil by doing good. This is the word of God. Read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you grow, 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 and you grow, 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 and you grow. Good day everyone, this is Kuya Albis and I'm going to tell you a story today. The story that I'm going to tell you is actually a real story. It's a true story and it happened in New Zealand way back. The title of our story is Tarore and Her Book. Tarore was the nine-year-old daughter of a village chief. She lived in an interior region of New Zealand way back in the year 1833. Her people, the Mori, were the native tribal people of the country, but their way of life was starting to change. A few Europeans were beginning to settle on the coast of these islands, and some had introduced alcohol and guns to the Maori people. Other European settlers were quite different. As Christian missionaries told the Maori in the north the good news about Jesus Christ, many had become Christians. Tarori's uncle was the great warrior chief of her tribe. He had just invited four missionaries from the north to visit his area because he heard that their Christian message had brought peace to the warlike tribes of the north. Up until this time, no white man had ever set foot in the interior region of New Zealand where Tarori lived. A great welcome was waiting for them when they got to the tribal meeting house. The Maori people looked at the strange clothes of the missionaries. They wore long trousers, black shoes, thick overcoats, ties and collars, and the tall black hats that people back in England wore in those days. Not only was their dress different, but also the color of their skin and eyes. But there was one thing that was the same. When they spoke, they spoke in the Maori language. The chief of the tribe was tired of the fighting and the constant battles between the different tribes. He was afraid that some of the trouble on the coast would spread inland to his area. He did not want this people to have guns or alcohol. The Maori people 
already knew that there was a living God who created everything in this world. But now, these Christian missionaries said, We want to tell you the good news that God has sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, to come into this world. He teaches us to turn our backs on hatred and war, and He wants to give us a new life. As the missionaries were talking about this, some of the warriors didn't want to listen. They liked to show off their fighting skills. So they started laughing. The chief turned to them and said sharply, Be quiet or leave. This is no way to treat invited guests. Over the next few days, the missionaries answered many questions and taught the people many things about God such as the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer. The chief asked, Can you send some Christian missionaries to live here amongst us and teach us more? So the following year, Mr. Brown and Mr. Wilson arrived with their families. When they came there, there was a look of amazement on everyone's faces. The European ladies wore strange bonnets and long dresses which went right down to the ground. So their legs could not be seen. They seemed to float along. So the people wondered, do these ladies have legs and feet? How do they walk? That evening, Mr. Brown said, let us pray together. He was very surprised when many of the people joined in and prayed the Lord's Prayer with them. They had remembered it from the previous year and had been praying it ever since. That evening, Tarori and her father, Narkuku, who was the chief of their village, came to Mr. Brown and asked, Will you teach us to read God's book? So the very next day, they started school. They did not have any blackboards or chalk, so Mr. Brown went down to the sand on the bank of the river and with a stick began to write letters and shapes in the sand. He taught them the letters of the Maori alphabet. It was not too long before Tarore and her father could read in their own language. After Mr. Brown had been there for four months, Chief Narkuku went to see him one night. He said, Mr. Brown, I want to turn my face towards Jesus Christ. I want to turn my back on my old ways. I am sorry for all the bad things I have done, and I never want to make war again. Then he said, I love the Lord Jesus, and now he is my chief, and I want to serve him only. It was Narkuku's way of saying that he wanted to become a Christian. He was going to follow Jesus from now on. He did not know it, but that same day, his daughter, Tarore, had gone to Mrs. Brown. She said to her, I do love the Lord Jesus with all my heart. And when I think about him, there is this singing in my heart. She too became a Christian. Chief Narkuku and his nine-year-old daughter, Tarori, became the very first Christians in the whole of that area. Soon afterwards, three others also became Christians, and a group of them met together to read the Bible and to pray. Their lives changed, and other people began to notice it. Later on, The first part of the Bible to be translated into the Maori language, Luke's Gospel, was sent to Mr. Brown. He gave a copy to Chief Narkuku and Tarori to share. The chief wrote his name in large letters inside the front page, Narkuku. Everywhere Tarori went, she carried the Gospel in a bag around her neck. It became her greatest treasure. She loved reading about God in her little Gospel of Luke. 
Every day, Tarori would gather all the children and read to them the stories of Jesus. Then, in the evenings, when all the warriors sat around their fires, they would call Tarore and ask her to read to them from the Gospel. As she read from the book of Luke in the Bible, the people began to change as they listened to it. The quarrels and fights among them grew fewer. It was not the missionaries who had brought about the change, no. It was the power of God's Word, the Bible. The Bible has the power to change you too. But first, of course, you must read it. Think about it and then do what it says. Toroi's uncle thought, surely peace is coming to my tribe at last, as they are listening to God's word and beginning to follow and do what it says. But trouble was on the way. A tribe who lived on the other side of the mountains started sending raiding parties to steal whatever they could. Although it was dangerous for Tarori's tribe, she said to her father, We do not need to worry. Jesus will take care of us. Her uncle told his warriors they were not to get revenge on the enemy tribe. They were not to send raiding parties back over the mountains, no. He said, Sit still. Do not get revenge. Do not do anything. Our tribe is now a tribe of peace. But some of those rebellious warriors did not want to sit still. They wanted to get even. The custom of getting revenge was part of their way of life. So they decided they were going anyway. Unfortunately, a number were killed in battle. Torari's uncle went after them to try to make peace, but unfortunately it was too late. In fact, to defend his own life, he had to fight hand-to-hand -hand with the chief of the other tribe. Fortunately, he won the battle. Later, he told Mr. Brown, I tried to tell the warriors to sit still and live in peace, but they would not. Why was he so different? Because hearing and reading God's words in the Bible had changed them just as God had changed Tarori and her father, Chief Narkuku. They knew, the Bible says, make sure nobody pays back wrong for wrong and do not seek revenge. What do you do when somebody says or does something bad to you? Do you take revenge or get even? Or do you obey God's words in the Bible and take no action against them? Unfortunately, the raids from the enemy tribe continued until it got so dangerous that the European missionaries decided to move out to the coast. Tarore, her father, and about 20 children went on ahead so they could continue their education. When they came to the mountains, they rested for the night. And before they went to sleep, Torori read from Luke's Gospel the story of Jesus calming the storm. She said to her father, Look, Jesus was with his friends in danger. They did not need to be afraid, and we do not need to be afraid either. That night, as Torori lay down to sleep in the hut, she used the bag with her Luke's Gospel in as her pillow. Unknown to Tarori and her father, there was another raiding party in the area. The men had seen the smoke from the campfire and thought maybe it was European traders and that they could get some guns and ammunition from them. When it was nighttime, they crept silently down through the trees. Suddenly, one of them came face to face with a horse tied to a tree. He had never seen a horse before and was so terrified, he yelled out in fright. A dog started barking and everyone woke up and rushed out of their huts. They ran into the fern to hide. But unfortunately, Tarori ran the wrong way. 
and straight into the arms of an enemy warrior. She began to cry out, Epa! Daddy! Daddy! And then, suddenly her hands found her little bag with her Luke's gospel in it. A great look of peace and joy came across her face and she called out, Ihu! Jesus! Then the warrior killed her, grabbed her bag and ran away. When her father, Narkuku, heard his daughter calling out, he ran back, but it was too late. There was his daughter's body lying on the ground. So, he picked up Tarori and carried her down the hill to Mr. Brown. All the ladies in the village began crying out and wailing to farewell Tarori and to send her off to the spirit world. In his heart, Narkuku was confused. He wondered, is my daughter going to the spirit world or is she going to heaven? So, he asked Mr. Brown about it. Mr. Brown read him a verse from the Bible. It said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. In my father's house are many rooms. I am going there to prepare a place for you. When he heard that, Narkuku knew in his heart that his daughter had not gone to the spirit world. She had gone to be with Jesus in heaven. Now, the fear left his heart. He knew she was safe. How wonderful to know that when a Christian dies, we do not need to be afraid of what will happen to them. Tarore had gone to live with the one she loved to read about in the Luke's Gospel she treasured so much. That Gospel changed her life. Are you letting the Bible change your life? Do you love reading it? Are you willing to spend time studying it as often as you can, like Tarori and her father did? You know, as we all close our eyes right now, you might like to silently tell God that you will read the Bible and ask Him to help you understand and obey it. After praying, you might also want to ask yourselves, do I need to get even? Do I need to pay back or take revenge on others who do or say bad things to you? As we think about it, maybe we should focus more on Tarori or her father's example. That instead of fighting back, maybe we just need to Give forgiveness as we have been forgiven by Jesus Christ Himself. Thank you for listening. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for our story today. Thank you for the Bible your word that guide us on the things that we should do. Give us strength and eagerness to read our Bible every day. Teach us not to get even to others who do bad things against us. Lastly, Lord, thank you for taking away the fear to die because it will be the time to live and be with you. Protect us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.